Good morning, welcome to Gran Canaria. We are going on a motorcycle tour up into the mountains um, and on one of the twistiest roads in Europe and also allegedly one of the most dangerous roads in the world, but I didn't know that, so <laughs> anyway, um, it should be fun. Let's go. Right, so we've rented motorbikes from a place in Playa del Inglés. Uh, the rental place is called Picky Pock. I will put a link in the description. I'm going to go and wait over here by these bins while Ben gets ready. Ben's going to lead the first bit. I'll lead in the afternoon. So just this mirror for a bit. Uh, oh, we're off already. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're off already. This is my first time riding on the right hand side of the road so that's why Ben's going first because I'm a bit of a pussy so I said you lead the first bit and I'll lead when we get up into the mountains um so far so good on the right hand side of the road but then it's early morning it's just gone nine o'clock we picked the bikes up at nine we've rented them nine from uh, from nine to six my bike is a Yamaha XSR 900. Ben is on the slightly smaller version, which is the 700. Um, mine was about 140 euros. It's high season per day. I think Ben's was slightly cheaper. Um, the place has a range of bikes. You basically go on the website some of the bikes they've only got one each of so if you want a specific bike you have to book a long way in advance we booked quite recently so our choice was limited however so far i'm liking this i'll give a bit more feedback once i've been on it for a while because in the at the moment my biggest concentration is passing these vehicles on the wrong side of the road i know it's the right side of the road for the rest of the world but hey all of my riding has been in the UK. Apart from a very brief time in a car in Lanzarote, but that was years ago, so that doesn't count. So, I'll tell you about the routes we're going to do. So this is Gran Canaria, it's the largest of the Canary Islands. Um, it's probably the one I've been to the most. I have been to all of the Canary Islands apart from the smallest one. We are in a resort called Playa del Inglés, which is right down at the southern tip of Gran Canaria. And we are going to ride up to the centre of the island, up the mountains. The road we're going to do, or the exciting road we're going to do, is the GC605. If you go on Google, there's a few people blogging about it. There are already a few YouTube videos, which I've watched in advance. I watched one by the Missenden Flyer, which I really liked, but he was very coy about the route he took because he wants you to go and book through a company and have a guided tour. We didn't want to do a guided tour because I didn't want to stick to somebody else's timetable. So I spent a lot of time on Google Maps planning a route. I saved that route with all the waypoints in. And then last night in the hotel, I realized I'd lost it so we've had to rapidly remake it and once we're used to the bikes then we will commence the route i may put a link to the route in the comments as well or in the description really weird as well one way streets like this in spain are now 20 kilometers an hour and here we are we've left the town and this road believe it or not is a 40. We are currently doing the speed limit. I don't know how long this is going to last. But anyway, now, because I've recorded this audio post the event, because I didn't have my in-helmet microphone, because it's not my helmet, it's a helmet I've rented, um, I can tell you that this is the wrong road. We're supposed to be on the GC40. But this is the GC503. But hey, I mean, it's marginally interesting and again, it's getting us used and used to the bikes. And I know what people will say. Well, if you'd gone on the guided tour, oh, look, there's the racing cart, look. If you'd gone on the guided tour, you wouldn't be on the wrong road going the wrong way. But it's quite good fun exploring. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can't. I, I'm not going to be able to do 40 kilometres an hour on roads like this. That's the Aqua Park. I've been there before. It's normally full of like two e two e people on there's a two e coach. Look, it's normally full of people on two e holidays, paying forty quid to go down a waterside. It's quite good actually. Okay, so it's not long after that first bit of road that it starts to climb into the mountains and the scenery has changed already. Although it wasn't warm when we, well, it wasn't hot when we set off because it was early in the morning, I've not felt hot yet and I'm certainly not feeling hot in the mountains. The jacket which I've rented is also ventilated. We're already quite a way up though. Quite high up, nice little village here. This is what people who come on holiday will say is the real Spain. Obviously, it's all the real Spain. I know it's the Canary Islands, but you get what I'm saying. It's less, it doesn't look touristy up here. Look at this again, a 20 kilometer per hour street. And the pedestrian crossings appear to be all humped as well. That keeps you on your toes. So yeah, the jacket is rented, the helmet's rented. Um, you can rent as much or as little gear as you want. The helmet and the gloves are included in the price. They have to give you those. Um, I did, however, actually bring my own gloves because I'm very fussy about gloves. I considered bringing my own helmet. It does fit in a standard suitcase. However, just think about what happens to your suitcase once you check it in. It's going to get thrown around. It's going to be going up and down conveyor belts and get squashed. It's the same as dropping it on the floor. So I decided to rent a helmet and it saves you a lot of space and a lot of luggage. Someone I know recently did take a crash helmet on EasyJet as hand baggage and had that as well as a normal bag for hand luggage so they didn't say anything I can't speak about the rules because I don't know but they didn't say anything to him and at the end of the day as he said to me if they'd said something he'll just bloody well wear it I know that's ridiculous but hey this looks interesting look at this we've got a spit of land here right and we've got a ravine at one side and a big drop at the other side. This is quite unique. It's like riding on the top of a book that's on its end. Wow. This is quite impressive. Even though we're going the wrong direction. We've got no comms either. So Ben and I have got no um, intercom. I did notice they did have in the shop some helmets with intercoms in. I didn't even bother to ask and I didn't think to ask. And at the end of the day, there's only two of us, so we can signal to each other if we need to stop. Bloody cyclists, they get everywhere, don't they? So we've just stopped. We don't know where we are. The sat nav's rerouting itself and taking us on a massive U-turn, but it's very beautiful. Look at that. Nice little bike as well, I'm really enjoying it. Right, we're, we're now heading back south on the road we just came on. It's a little bit annoying and as I said, if we had got either the guided tour or I hadn't lost my route, we wouldn't be doing this. But you are never lost on a motorbike. And to be fair, it's incredibly peaceful up here, essentially because the roads don't go anywhere. <clears throat> So we're going to loop back down all the way almost to Playa del Inglés again and then back up the correct road that we should have gone on in the first place. But I have to say that location we stopped at, really, really beautiful, stunningly peaceful. You couldn't hear a sound up there. The mountains are amazing. The temperature is absolutely perfect. So I'm not complaining. We are on the proper road here. 
and we are heading up into just look at that scenery the landscape it's almost like another planet. The rocks are like jutting out over the road. The road surface, by the way, isn't that good. That's me pointing at this first hairpin coming up. The road surface isn't that good. It's full of these cracks in the tarmac, but they are not wide enough to get your wheel. So although it looks bad, there's no like dangerous potholes yet. I love a hairpin. Whee! And another one. And they're right. So, as I was saying on the introduction, okay, so one of the reasons you come and ride this route is because the GC605, which we'll get on this afternoon, is one of the twistiest roads in the world. So it has about 75 hairpins in succession. I did do try, I tried to count the twists on Google Maps. I got 122, but they're not all hairpins, so I think whoever's bandying about the figure of 75 hairpins is probably spot on. Look at that view. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. And there's nothing here. There's no towns, there's no industry, there's no noise. It's just you, a motorbike, the wilderness, and the mountains, and if you've been to Gran Canaria or any of the Canaries before, you will probably be surprised at how green it is up here. I mean, even though we're only just getting into the middle of the island, I'm seeing forests down there, and I've never seen a forest on Gran Canaria before. But I'm loving the Yamaha. This this exercise is really nice. It certainly handles well. It does the corners well. And I can see why they rent this bike specifically out here. What's well, Ben slowed down for? Let's go. I need to push him. Go on, Ben. <laughs> Doing a little film of him riding, there you go. That's me telling him to look at the camera. He's not, okay. There you go, he waved. Better move out of the way. Right, so there's quite a lot of vegetation here, um, and it does it gets greener and greener. That town looks absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do, we're heading to a place called Tahirda. This isn't it. Um, it's right up in the mountains. It's near the peak, which is called... Rocca Nublo or something like that. I forgot. That's the highest mountain on Gran Canaria. And there's a village called Tejeda and it's a very old traditional Spanish village which again a lot of coach tourists go to and if you hire a car that looks like a nice restaurant. If you hire a car it's one of the go-to places and indeed if you hire a motorbike as we have, it's also one of the go-to places. And indeed, if you've watched the Missand and Flyers video, it's the place he goes to, and he tells you that if you were on a guided tour, you will only find these places on a guided tour because you won't know about it if you do it yourself. Well, guess what? I know about it. So that's why we're going. But this is stunning. I mean, look at this valley. It's getting greener and greener palm trees up in the mountains. The sun is fantastic. I'd say it's about 18 degrees up here in the mountains. It's 27 past few days in Playa del Inglés so in the south. It's been about 27, 30 degrees. It's definitely not that temperature up here. This is like a nice cool summer's day in England up here. The jacket I've got is quite light. I was worried about the temperature actually but those worries are completely unfounded.
That's a big lorry for these little roads. A good thing is with hairpins like this, more bloody cyclists look. A good thing is hairpins like this, an open landscape, you can generally see what's coming the other way. Look at that view over there though. Lots of really nice parking spots or viewpoints or mirador as they called in Spanish, so a viewpoint. So there's plenty, if you were the sort of person that brings a flask and a packed lunch, which we haven't done, then you, look at that view, there's loads of places to stop on these roads. I mean it'd be ideal for a camper van, but you'd have to get your camper van here in the first place. We've not encountered many other vehicles. We've had to overtake one or two cars. We've got a few now in front of us. But on the whole, we've pretty much had this road, so far anyway, we've had this road to ourselves. And it's been lovely. And of the vehicles we have seen as well, it's mainly little higher cars. And they're um, equally like us tourists doing the same thing. Right, let, we're going round this one. I notice we have slowly crept above the speed limit. I don't know what the um, law is like in Spain, but you can't, you really can't do 40. I don't believe they have any speed cameras up here, but that don't ever take my word for that. I have heard that car moved over, which was very nice. I have heard that they do have mobile speed cameras. And we did see a sign indicating that there are speed cameras, so don't say I didn't tell you. But I think the pace we're doing now, see other bikers, they wave here, they don't nod, I've noticed. Um, the pace we're doing now, for me, is pretty much perfect. It's nice to be behind Ben, because that keeps my, it keeps me sensible. I am on six points in the UK, so this is a this is a nice pace for this terrain at this moment in time, and I'm loving every minute of it. Right, in the shadow of this mountain, it is actually getting quite cold. That's the first time today that I felt any sort of coldness. So we are obviously getting quite high up now because you've got a massive change in temperature. When I say cold, I mean it's probably like 15 in the shade. I don't know, but it certainly felt like that. And I'm somebody who rides all year in the UK. But that was the, that was the first time that I felt a little bit of a chill in the air. And it was just in the shadow of the mountain. That's an interesting rock formation there. Look at that. That's fascinating. This is because it's all volcanic, so they're all the old lava stacks. And I said it before, it feels almost Martian. It's like another planet. Right, we're getting above the clouds now. I mean, if you've ever been... This reminds me a bit, I'll tell you what it's like. You go in like the Cairngorms or somewhere like that. This road is wet. Okay, this road is wet from cloud moisture. And you really feel it when you go through the cloud. I don't know if it showed on the camera there, I don't think it really does, but you're going through like a mist, the road is wet here. But it's decent quality tarmac, I've not felt the need to slow down or anything. This is a stunning landscape. But yeah, you go, you get up here, you go through the clouds, it gets colder. Right, here we are. This is the beginning of the village of Tahida. This is our destination. This is our first stop. Um, we're going to have some lunch here. The reason we've come here, there's, well, there's several reasons we've come here. Number one, I watched the Missenden Flyers video. And he came here, and then he said, oh, if you don't book a guided tour, you won't find out about these places. Look at that over there. Um, obviously, nice, isn't it? Um, 
so obviously we have found out about it because I've got Google right we are supposed to be turning down there and Ben's gone straight up turn around so now we're going to have to turn around now obviously if we'd booked a guided tour we wouldn't need to be doing a U-turn but this is part of the fun I like exploring it's a really beautiful village now this is it's a one way street as well so this is the old town it's marked on Google Maps as Tejeda Historic Centre or Centro Historico um, just so you can find out exactly where there's a pin Somebody just put a pin in the map this is a one way street as well which is how we didn't quite find it it's quite well hidden wouldn't fancy doing these cobbles in the wet looks very nice church over there that looks nice gonna go and have a look we're gonna go in one of these restaurants there's plenty of places here to eat and drink we haven't booked anything but the view over that I think we're gonna go in there the view over there is stunning. Let's go and get some food. Right, so you pay 15 euros for veal and you have to cook it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so the meal was delicious despite having to cook it myself, but the view there out over Tahida is beautiful and the little old high street is pretty as well. We've just walked down the stairs towards this church. This is the Iglesia Nuestra Señora del Socorro. So Google tells me. Catholic churches are so different to the Church of England churches. Look at that, it's amazing. Right, that was nice. We're gonna carry on. What's going to happen now? We're going to get up to the top of the mountain on the on the road we came in on. Then we're going to swap places and I'm going to lead. So watch out Gran Canaria. I think I'm used to driving on the right now. Here we go again. Loads of places to eat, to eat here. Highly recommended. And the views are so this over to the right hand side, right? This it's not a ravine, it's actually a collapsed volcanic crater, and it's one of only two of its type in the world. It is really, really impressive. We're actually in a volcano. I mean the whole the whole of the Canary Islands are volcanic, but that is quite unique apparently. So this is new roads. We've turned off. This is the GC605 and we're going to stop before before the good bit. We're just kind of getting to one of the viewing places. They're, always, they're marked on Google Maps, I said it earlier on anyway, they're marked on Google Maps as Mirador, which is just viewpoint. I've got to say, the road is variable. Some places it's amazing. This is like a patchwork quilt. It's absolutely horrific. It's worse than the UK. Just wanted to get that in there. Right, the next piece of road we're about to do is the famous bit that's got 75 hairpins in succession, which is apparently more than any road in the Alps or indeed any other road in Europe. And that's why you come here. Enjoy. So, I'm going to carry on on my own for a bit. Ben is going to do some filming just to give you a better idea of what this road is really like. This is the good bit. The views are phenomenal. The roads are pretty good. I mean, the roads are bloody phenomenal as well. I mean, you don't really see it from the bike so much. If I had a... If I had a 
Insta360 on a stick, you'd be getting a better thing, which is why we've got the drone footage as well. Unfortunately, I don't have the stick with me. <clears throat> but, I mean, there you go, you know. The view with your own eyes is impressive, and the view from the drone is impressive. This is one of the best roads in Europe. I'm not going very fast because the drone has a, uh, a maximum speed that it can't keep up with me. But you have to come here to experience this. I mean, even, even like the forest, the trees, everything is amazing. So I'm just heading back to pick up Ben and we're going to continue. We're going to continue on this bit. So I've done this bit on my own, so I'm heading backwards now. And then I will lead for the rest of the day. Right, we are back on the road. Ben is now behind me. I'm in front. I do have a sat now. So worth pointing out, I think I've said it already, there is a phone holder. There is a phone holder on the bike. It's a generic phone holder. It's a very good one. You're not going to drop your phone. I was a bit worried. Um, they were more than happy for me to attach my Insta360 to the bike as well. The quality of the bikes is good. My rear tyre um, could do with replacing, but Ben's is practically brand new. So, I think you get what you're given. So, this is the bit that has 73 hairpins. We're not going to be doing this fast. I think I'm just going to shut up and let this bit of the video speak for itself. Just going to pull in for a bit. show you on the drone it should be a better point a better viewpoint to get an aerial view with the drone of what this road is actually like so we're midway halfway through the 75 hairpins um it's quite exhilarating because you don't do them fast it's not as exhilarating as some other roads. It's more about the technical challenge, the scenery, and the fact that you're doing it, and the fact that there's so many, and the repetition. And just to give you an idea of what it looks like above, here's a, an aerial shot courtesy of Ben's drone. So this is, we're halfway, and this is the bit we're about to do next. And it really, really doesn't disappoint. So, just to give you some fact. Now, I've been calling it the GC605, which is its proper name. Um, its Spanish name, or the road name, if you like, is Carretera de las Presas. That means Road of the Dams. There are various uh, dams supplying fresh water up here in the hills. You can't really see them, but trust me, they're there. We did pass one, but I don't think it's on the camera. Now, the descent is just under 1,000 metres. It's never any steeper than a 10% 10, 10 incline. Uh, the average gradient is only about 4.2, so it's not particularly steep. Now, I've quoted this figure a lot, and this figure comes from other people's videos. There are 73 hairpins. Now, I've kind of touched on this already. I went on Google Maps. I counted the lot. Um, so in the 24 kilometres or 50 mile stretch that we're doing here, there are 122 turns. Of those, 
73 are hairpins. Of those, I think 25 are proper, proper tight hairpins. So, it is what you might call treacherous. Little bit foreboding. But it's also absolutely amazing. And because we've done it as a descent, I think we're getting the better the better view, the better experience. I have read online some people are doing it from Morgan, which is the village we are heading to later. They start in Morgan if you hire a car and then they head up the mountain. I think we're doing it the better way round because we've had the less exciting roads in the morning and now in the afternoon we have saved the best till last. And it really is getting better and better. It's worth noting as well, um, because obviously it's dry rocks and it's a very barren surface, we've passed a few places where there's been what you might call a, a mini rock fall on the road, so you do have to take care. Some sections of this are very narrow would not get two cars past at once. But what I'm going to do now, because this is the best bit, I'm going to shut up and enjoy it.
pretty much at the end now so this tur it turns into the GC200 which is another road worth doing in its own right that is another day not in this video that goes up the uh, west coast um, this is El Molino de Viento I believe um, lovely little woman it used to be open to the public but it's not so at the minute and this road goes down to well, we've been through Morgan. This goes down to Puerto de Morgan, which is the seaside port that we are going to go and have our afternoon coffee and cake and possibly an ice cream. I have noticed, because we've been treated a little bit too well with the weather in the mountains, I have noticed it's getting incredibly hot now. And I've got leather trousers on, but hey. Um, so we're heading down to Morgan, where no doubt the temperature is somewhere like 30 degrees. But I mean, I've ridden, I've ridden in the UK in hotter than that. So we're going to find somewhere cool. Hopefully by the marina. Get something to eat and drink. And then we will continue along the coast road. Which is the G6, either the GC500 or the GC50. I don't know if it's all bad. Here's the pull off from again here. Yeah, it's getting proper, proper hot now. The sun is blazing down. This jacket, though, that they've, they've lent me, it's actually really light and it's well ventilated. And all of these road humps. No, all of these pedestrian crossings are in fact humps. The blue ones. There you go. You'll only, you'll only go over them fast once. I'm sure the sign probably said humped pedestrian crossing, but it was probably in Spanish. Right, here we are. There's the motorbike parking. See if I can squeeze in at the end there. What a lovely place. I think we're going to be sitting inside in the uh, air, air conditioned. Right, we sat inside in the air conditioned place because it was too hot to be sitting outside dressed like this. So we're leaving Puerto Morgan and we're going to go there's a, we have to go on the motorway for a bit, unfortunately. We're going to have to go on the motorway for a bit. This is Puerto Rico. And we have to go through here to get onto the coast road. So once we're through the urban area, we'll be back on the... Well on the coast road and this is it this is the gc500 this is a lovely road to finish the day i look at that sun coming over the sea this is fantastic i've got to say i have thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this and i will be coming back next year there's also a few other rides i want to do on this island as well So, thank you for watching. Um, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Tell me some other good roads, either on Gran Canaria or Lanzarote, Fuerteventura. I don't mind, maybe Tenerife. I will see you in the next video.